Okay, we're, we're in Special Collections of Addlestone Library on the College of Charleston campus where we've recently acquired a really important and stunning collection of Grimke family materials. The Grimkes were a distinguished South Carolina family. They'd fought in the American Revolution. One was an early mayor or intendant of the city of Charleston, later became a judge, a leading intellectual of his time period. But what America remembers today are two of the women, the Grimke sisters from South Carolina, um, those sisters were Sarah and Angelina Grimke. Um, they were born in the lap of luxury. They were surrounded by slaves. Um, but yet their conscience would not allow them to live off of the luxury and the work of others. So they really rebelled against this. Sarah was the much older sister. She sort of took her sister Angelina under her wing. Um, they started to lobby for um, abolitionism, for the destruction of slavery and they even became much more rabid and much more revolutionary. They sort of realized that if African Americans weren't the only people that didn't have equal rights, they started seeing that everyone required equal rights and was, was extremely revolutionary in their day. They saw that women themselves, they as women, did not have equal rights of their brothers and of their fathers. Um, Angelina was the first woman to address a legislative body in America. Um, the idea that a woman could walk down the aisle of a public hall and stand up there and talk about something was incredibly um, revolutionary and radical in their day. So they were remarkable women. They did not live to see, they lived to see the end of slavery. They acknowledged the um, half-black children of their brothers, of their brother Henry. Um, they did not live to see um, women getting the vote, but we probably would not have gotten the vote if not these early agitators. Because the Grimke sisters left the South, um, there's very little manuscript material documenting the sisters themselves. Um, so the collections that we recently purchased with the friends of the library um, really shows the sisters themselves. There's a lot about their father and their brothers, et cetera, too. But it's really interesting, in these documents themselves, we sort of have a microcosm of the world that the Grimkes grew up in and then the world that the Grimkes created. Um, these two upper documents, um, the one on the left is a letter to Thomas Smith Grimke, Judge Grimke, telling him that, um, excuse me, not uh, John Fosherow Grimke, that one of his slaves has escaped from him who's died of want. So there you would see that the sisters would see that their father owned slaves that ran away and the slave actually died of starvation and exposure to the elements rather than to become a slave. And then over here on the right, um, their father, John Fosherow Grimke, was an early mayor of the city of Charleston. And here you see that the mayor or the intendant is being asked to attend the opening of the sugar house a very ironical um, phrase for uh, uh, I mean, a prison that would have been used where Negroes or, or slaves would have been sent for punishment. So here you see the milieu that they came from. And then maybe here on these other letters down here, you see what they achieved. These are much later from the 1870s, almost 100 years later or so. Um, here's the death announcements of Sarah Grimke, um, a remarkable thing. And on the reverse side of it, um, Angelina is writing her sisters, talking about what an effect her older sister Sarah had on her. She's pouring out her heart, saying that without Sarah, she would have not become the woman um, that she had become. And over um, on the other side of it, to the left, too, is again a, a, a letter you can see signed at the bottom of A.G. Weld, Angelina Grimke Weld, who married one of the leading abolitionists of her day as well, too. So there again on Christmas Day, she's writing about um, the death of her sister and the remarkable passing you know, of this true American. And in the Victorian time period, People were so sentimental, they did not want to, and as today, we don't want our dead to leave us. So they would also often snip memorials. So there is a lock of Sarah Grimke's hair um, snipped by her sister Angelina being sent along to another one of her sisters. So we're very happy to have um, these remarkable women to actually have documentary evidence here at the College of Charleston, you know, which now does support women's studies, um, which was opened up to women students and now has a majority of women students. So it's a remarkable thing. I think we're probably the only institution in the South now that actually has documentary material of these sisters who left the South who were, per, who were for a while disowned by the South, and now we're very happy to claim them and the legacy that they did of changing the South and the rest of the country.